look, I woke up and saw this KSU deal, and I said to myself, this is the kind of thing that makes so much sense. I've been waiting for it. I look at uh, Warren Buffett's numbers at the end of the week. They always show you how much uh, business Burlington Northern's doing. Uh, and the numbers are about to cross into the uh, low teens. I think that rails are incredibly valuable because of scarcity. David, the thing that I don't know, if they don't uh, overlap, then why wouldn't the authorities go for it? Uh, you know, it's likely that they probably, well, we can't prejudge these things. The Surface Transportation Board, we know, Jim, from previous attempts by various rails at, at certain consolidation, they haven't liked. But to your point, with no overlap, I think the expectation is more likely that they will say yes to the deal. And, of course, the way it's structured and the way we've seen previous rail deals structured, you can even go back, way back to when there were deals involving broadcast licenses. There's creation of this trust. So you're going to be able to sell your shares sooner than when the regulatory review period has ended into the trust. And then they will take on the risk at Canadian Pacific, essentially, of closing the deal from there. And should it go against them, then they're going to have to figure out what to do with that ownership of, of, uh, of, of, uh, of Kansas City in that trust. But you're right. Um, given the history, at least, the fact that there's no overlap, the fact that uh, Kansas City Southern, by the way, was exempted from certain rules as well. And we'll be talking to Keith Creel, the CEO, a bit later in the show about a lot of this. It does appear likely that this deal would get uh, potentially approved, Jim. And it's also a reason why so few other potential rails could right. come to play here. Look, David, uh, I know Mexico pretty well. And I've got to tell you, the amount of business the KSU does in Mexico is so unbelievable. And it's auto. And now I know that the former president did not favor uh, cars being built in Mexico versus here. But that doesn't get talked about much anymore. So, David, this is a powerhouse idea because it is because this is about Mexico. This is not about United States, uh, which is why it's so exciting for CP, because they become a major uh, in, in what I think is going to be an amazing auto market, a major, a major importer of Mexican auto that is just spectacular. So, David, this is a big, this is a big number raiser for CP if they can get it done. If they can get it done. It, it's going to take some time. By the way, 67% of the consideration is in stock. Right. Uh, as our, our viewers may already know, it's 90 in cash and then 0.489 Canadian Pacific shares. So we'll keep a close eye on those shares and see how they perform this morning down. But it appears perhaps won't be down too much. And again, we haven't opened for actual trading uh, as of yet. Uh, talking about uh, annual synergies of, what, 780 million over low, three low years? Ball. There low you ball. see it. That's low ball. And, uh, you know, quick little background here, having talked to people, as you might expect, uh, uh, close to the transaction. I mean, this conversation has been going on for quite some time, right. August, September. I think this really picked up uh, in December, I'm told, in terms of really focusing on a deal. There was a P.E. bid there. There was a bid from Blackstone. It had been previously reported by the Wall Street Journal, Jim. Um, and it was all cash and obviously did not carry the risk that this kind of a deal would. However, I'm told it just wasn't close enough in terms of the number to really compete with what Canadian Pacific came with. And so the, the board made the decision there that, that this is by far the better deal. Uh, and again, they've got the big break fee. They've got the voting trust. And we'll see where it ends up. But, David, doesn't it feel like that's the kind of deal that would have happened pre-pandemic, where there's just a, a sense that autos are going to be good mm -hmm. uh, and Mexico could be pre, actually pre-President Trump? It does feel like, David, that when I saw I mean, look, I, you know, got the uh, emails, you probably did much more work than I did, obviously, on the people who are uh, the principals. And one thing is certain, David, it just doesn't, it's not about the pandemic anymore. I mean, it's just about <clears throat> pure business. So, if something right. happened. Well, listen, it, it is, it's an, a good question. Um, this is not a deal that is foreign to anybody who's thought about consolidation in the rail industry, right? And this right. is obviously the smallest player, so to speak, and creating, as you say, Canada and Mexico. I mean, it's, yeah. But why now? Again, they've been talking about it for many months, if not even longer in some way, be con been considering it, Jim. But it, perhaps it is a reflection of the expectation of, of, of the significant economic growth that's ahead for the region. 
and the increased trade that's going to take place between Mexico, the U.S., and Canada, especially given that new free trade agreement that, that right. went into place not that long ago. So, yeah, I guess, I guess it could be. And by the way, when it comes to mergers and acquisition activity, and I'll put SPACs in a separate area because obviously those count as mergers when they do their deal. But there is a lot of, uh, you know, when speaking to a lot of people around this deal who do a lot of other things, as you might imagine, a lot of other, there's a lot of activity. Right. And it, so I think we right. can't expect to see other um, significant transactions. Transformative, I don't know, but significant. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.